and now we're back. Alright, so welcome back to another video channel. This is your first time channel. Welcome to Game Blimmer 15 of Yakuza Like a Dragon. Alright, so here's the thing. We hit that 15 video milestone. I wanted to come by real quick and just say thank you so much for coming by and spend another video on the channel. And also, this story is getting really, really good. Like, in a prior video, if you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and watch that video. I had a whole lot of fun, you know, making that video and I greatly appreciate it. But in a prior video, we just learned a new revelation. And that is, Namba is not the person that we entirely think he is. Apparently, he's been undercover as a homeless person looking for his brother. Like, I never knew, or was there any clues that I had in mind that he was looking for his brother. And I'm actually really curious to see, you know, what's gonna happen to today's video. But before you continue on with the story, I got one more thing to add. Today, on September 5th, 2023, it's my 26th birthday, and wow, I made it to 26. I'm really thankful for it, and wow, I'm I'm actually really excited. I've been doing this YouTube thing for close to three years now, and I've been having a whole lot of fun making this journey. I've been having a whole lot of fun going through this journey, and wow, close to three years. That's actually pretty crazy, but as I was saying, Yes, it is my birthday today, and supporting this video would be greatly appreciated. Dropping a like, comment, and sharing the video would be greatly appreciated. And subscribe to the channel, and I'd greatly appreciate that one as well. And now, let's go ahead and continue on with the story. Seems I've underestimated you, Ichiban Kasuga. <sighs> then, how about we call it a day? If you don't mind. That depends on what he says. Huh? <sighs> Fine. You still want to fight, Jungi Han? Arata, Namban and Yijin chose a pandeshi choba. I'm sorry, ma'am. But Namba managed to slip away. Shit. <laughs> Good job, Namba. Quiet. You don't understand what you've done. Sure I do. We saved our friend from getting murdered. What's it to you? If he leaks the secrets of our operation, we'll lose any control we had, and Ijin Cho will crumble. Crumble? Don't you think you're being a bit dramatic? And if the fake money dries up, wouldn't that cut down on crime? None of you understand. I'm telling you, the city would grind to a halt. We can't allow that to happen. Does that mean you're not giving up on snaring Namba then? Of course not. Until he scales the Great Wall, he's fair game. The Komi Jewel will use every resource at its disposal to find him. Say you actually find him. Then what? We kill him, obviously. You set on that? <laughs> of course. <sighs> well... I guess we're doing this. Doing what? My pals and I will help Namba escape, since you insist on murdering him. I guess we'll just see which side gives up first. This will be exciting. <sighs> You're not funny. I'm not trying to be. I'm serious. Haven't you figured out what kind of guy I am yet? <sighs> yeah, a pain in the ass. Don't be like that. I know you're head over heels for me, so... Can't you just let Namba go? He's not gonna go around spreading your secret. Well, it's not just my secret, so I can't make the decision by myself. But you're the leader of the Komi Jewel. If you just give the word... Kasuga. What? 2 a.m. tonight, Heian Tower in Chinatown. Be there. There's a man I'd like you to meet. Whether Namba lives or dies will be up to him. Who is he? Don't be late. What's gonna go down at Heian Tower? Your guess is as good as mine, man. What are we going to do until 2 a.m.? Actually, there's something I want to look into while we got the time. What's that? For six months, Nanba pretended to be a bump so he could watch the Komi Jewel. That's what they said, wasn't it? Yeah. Song Gui mentioned it. He must have had a lot of stuff at the homeless camp to live there so long. It's probably still there. 
I want to check, at least. There might be a clue that would tell us where he'd go if he had to hide, you know? Well, not a bad idea, but can't take Psycho to a smelly hobo camp. Dude, I'm going too. Don't even think about pulling that card. Alright, so sadly, Namba left the party, but it's all good. We're gonna regroup later, hopefully. Alright, let's go ahead and head back to the hobo camp. Let's see. How far is it from here? Okay, not, not far at all. But it is gonna take me some time to get over there, but... Man, it's too bad we still don't got the footage, though. Hopefully, when 2 a.m. comes around, we'll be able to obtain the footage. Or at least have some supporting evidence. Alright, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to get over there. So with that, I'm going to meet y'all over at the destination. Talk to you soon. Let's keep it going. Alright, cool. So I'm back at the camp. Let's go ahead and investigate Namba Spot. Hey. Oh, it's the chief. It's been a while. Excuse me. Well, right now it's not really an option. It's not like we're trying to steal from him either way. <laughs> Really is. Shoot, it feels like it's been forever since we've been here. Mm. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. Man, it feels like forever since the day since Ichiban was, you know, hiding that box and got in a fight with. Hmm, I believe it wasn't Yakuza. Yeah, he was part of Leo Mom, hey. if I'm not mistaken. Oh, shoot, you might be onto something. He had a laptop? good idea hmm? oh yeah um Ichiban more than likely doesn't know how to use a laptop hmm. hey Okay, we're on to something. <sighs> yeah, Ben, that's the case right now. Mm -hmm. Isn't that his brother? It is. Yo. Dang. Hey, yeah.
Okay. Is that so? More than likely. I see. Oh, that's true. That is true. How everything went, there was no way for Ichimaru to know that that was Namba's whole goal this whole time was to find his brother. There's no way he can build himself for that. Cool. Very well could be, to be honest. Alright, so let's see. Where's the location from here? Oh, also, it'd be really benefit, big benefit to me to, you know, utilize this since this is here. Very nice. Helped out with the MP a lot. Also, what's this? Ooh, another Tojo Clan crest. Nice. All right, now where do I gotta go? All the way. Oh, I haven't even been to this section yet. Okay, cool. There's a couple of stores here too. That's nice. All right, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get over there. So with that, I'm gonna meet y'all over at the destination. Talk to you soon. And I'm about to get into the fight. All right, so with that, I'll meet y'all over there. Talk to you soon. Let's keep going. We're gonna do windmill on you. This is like a perfect spot. Go. Nice. Just like that. Finish the fight. Very nice. Wait, what? What am I walking into right now? Oh, shoot. I forgot about this quest. Okay. Let's see. Wait. Wait a minute. Is there four people? I thought it was just one. Oh my gosh. All of them look guilty. Wait a minute. By their posture, everyone looks like they're they're doing it. Oh man. I gotta go with the one on the far right. Well, shoot, it's kinda hard to tell. Maybe. Hmm. The second 
from the left. Man, especially the one on the far right. That one looks guilty. That one looks really guilty. Let's see. Second one from the right or left. Hmm. I'll go for the one on the left. Hey. Man, I can't believe. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. At all. That really wasn't. Let's see. Can we, you know, confront the other people here? Wait. They all disappear all at once? Dang, they're quick. I wonder which one was actually the guilty one. Alright, I guess I'm going to figure that out another time. I guess for right now, I'm going to go ahead and make my way over to the tower. I'm going to talk to y'all soon. Or get into another fight. Alright, talk to y'all soon. Let's do this. Let me go ahead and do windmill. No. Well, they're good together. Right here, this should be good. Alright. I think I'm good here. Gonna do this. Very nice. Touch on London Final Blow. Alright, so welcome back. So I know I said I was gonna meet y'all over at the destination, but here's the thing. I wanted to come by the bar real quick and try to figure out how to unlock, you know, the bond lock that's been, you know, keeping me from, you know, progressing the bond between Adachi and Sachan. So here we are. We're back at Survive right now. And let's go ahead and figure this out. I think talking to them while we're here should help out. Hey, Ichiban. Want to grab a drink with me? Sure. But you really know how to knock them back, Sachan. Promise me you'll keep it to one or two. Oh, come on. It's no big deal if we drink more than that. It's not like I'm going to make a move on you. <laughs> well, that's a bummer. So, hey, you're technically still a mama at a hostess club, right? Yeah, but I didn't found the place. I was promoted to mama after Nonomiya saw that I was the best hostess there. <laughs> if you're that good a hostess, you'll be bored drinking with me. I ain't much for clever conversation. Don't be so hard on yourself. It takes practice. I definitely wasn't a natural at it. But neither of us is looking for tips right now, so who cares? <laughs> okay. So what's happening with the club now? Still going strong, even without Nonomiya? I've got the girls holding down the fort. They should be fine, barring any earthquakes. Or ex-boyfriends. Oh, pretty impressive that you trust your staff to run the whole joint. They know the basics of the business. I'm the kind of mama who teaches her youngsters well. If you do say so yourself. <laughs> well, I do. But of course, it was that desire to educate that caused all the drama in my family. Was that all the stuff with Nanoha and your dad that you mentioned before? Yeah, at least things have simmered down among us recently. Thanks to you guys. My dad's in a real nursing home now, and Nanoha is looking for a more legit job like she had before. So you call them pretty often? Oh, no. Never. I just have my hostesses secretly check in on them every now and then. Nanoha doesn't want to see me. She'd be furious. Why? You two really can't get along? That's an understatement. I haven't seen her in seven years. I do call her up sometimes, but she never wants to meet in person. I'd like to, though, and I tell her that. She turns me down every time. I have no one to blame but myself, really. I'm listening. It's a boring story. You sure you want to hear it? All right, so let's see the options here. We got three. We can go with, I'm here to listen, Sachan. Or the second one, well, it's not like you got to entertain me. 
And for the third one, I'm all about boring stories. Hmm, let's go with this. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And why not? I love shonen manga. I'm sure I'll like your story too. <laughs> no way do you really mean that. It's true. Now come on, let me hear it. <laughs> okay, if you're going to beg, I guess I have to tell you. Thanks. Uh, so go ahead. How come you don't get along with Nanoha? Well, I think it's because I was just too controlling. I always had something to say about everything she did. My mom was sick throughout our whole childhood, so I felt like I had to take care of my shy little sister. Little sister? But you're the same age, unless there's a new kind of twin I don't know about. Of course we're the same age. Her personality just always made her seem younger. She was so timid. I was the one with the guts, just like Mom. It's probably why Mom trusted me more than Dad. He was closer to Nanoha since she took after him. I gotcha. Dad wasn't earning much from the little company he ran back then. I tried to help him out by getting a part-time job in high school. Didn't take me long to figure out nightlife entertainment was where the real money was. Pretty soon, I was essentially the breadwinner of the family. And after Mom died, even more so. All I wanted was for Nanoha to get into a good college and live an honest life. But you think that came off as controlling to her? Yeah. I told her which college to go to. Insisted she become some sort of white-collar professional. But the straw that really broke the camel's back was me chiming in about her new boyfriend. I listed every red flag I could possibly think of, then I asked her if the dude raised any of them. What, like you made a physical list? <laughs> yeah. Stuff like being dirty, acting douchey at restaurants, condescending towards women, always name dropping. There were a lot. I went too far, honestly. But you know what? The bastard did fit a lot of them. She was like, oh, but he's getting it together. He's starting a consulting firm. But I told her to dump his ass. I'm betting she didn't like that. No, she did not. She threw stuff, screamed herself hoarse, cried. Even my freaking dad cried seeing all the drama. Oh, jeez. It was that intense? I think it always bothered him that he couldn't make enough money to help my mom. He was embarrassed I made more than he did. I remember, after he found out what my pay was, he just started doing whatever I said. And then all of a sudden, during this fight, he started sobbing about how he should have helped Nanoha break free from me. Sounds like he was finally letting out everything he'd bottled up. Yeah. And it turned out Nanoha's boyfriend problem was just the beginning. Because in that moment, I realized my family was distancing themselves from me. Sachan. It was, um, seven or eight years ago when I decided to leave home and just focus on work. Imagine how it felt when Nonomiya called and told me about this new family trouble. How Nanoha chose to work at a soap land instead of asking me for help. I was shocked. <sighs> I really was. Just in case it ever comes up, we're all supposed to pretend you don't know she was working at Otohime Land, right? Knowing my sister, she'd die of embarrassment if she found out I know. Well, then the charade must go on. Oh, <laughs> I think I had one too many after all. I didn't plan on talking for so long. But thanks for getting a drink with me, Ichiban. Everyone's going through something. Having a friend to talk to just makes it a little easier. Well, that's true. And you know what? What's even better is we finally solve the mystery of the lock to, you know, to get out from not being able to progress the bond between, you know, Ichiban and Sachan. Let's see the message here. Kasuga feels his bond with Seiko grows stronger. Seiko will now gain more experience when she is not in the active party. Wait, what? N when she's not in the active party? Like, when she leaves? Huh. Okay, I wonder what scenario there will be where she's not going to be in a party. 
All right, but for right now, let's go keep going. Actually, now let's go ahead and talk to Dachi. Dachi-san, either I need my eyes checked, or you actually bought a drink from the bar. Hmm. Oh, it's uh, Miss Just Water. Giving your liver a rest? That's rare for you. Nah, it's only because I don't have the money for sake right now. Not even sneaking it in from the convenience store. Damn, you're that broke, huh? I forgot to set aside something for this one big expenditure I have every month. It's, it's stupid. What expenditure? You in debt or something? Nah, nothing like that. I, I've been sending Takashi money. Oh, isn't Takashi-kun the son of the guy who was arrested on false charges? Yeah. Kasumi. And he was arrested because I didn't believe Takashi's testimony. Yeah, but you also tried to get Kusumi released, right? Poor Nouchi's the one who shot it down. <laughs> Doesn't matter whose fault it is. Nothing will bring Kasumi back from the dead. And you don't know how shitty it got for Takashi. First his dad killed himself, then his mom passed away from grief. Poor kid ended up in an orphanage. Well, ever since then... I've been sending Takashi money every month. Under a fake name, of course. Why a fake name? Because Takashi wouldn't accept money from me. I'm one of the cops who locked up his old man. So I started sending money to him under the pseudonym Yamada. That's a hell of a good deed, Adachi-san. But wouldn't Takashi wonder why the heck some stranger named Yamada-san was sending money? <laughs> oh, I didn't overlook that. See, I played this Yamada-san character as a rich guy with a passion for philanthropy. And it worked. Takashi took the money without thinking twice about it. A passion for philanthropy, huh? Hmm, let's see the choices. We got, man, that's some real commitment? Or, you're like Daddy Long Legs? And for the last one, maybe we should get you a suit. I think we can work that out. Let's go with... Honestly, Adachi-san... You've got the perfect build to play a rich philanthropist. You look damn sharp in a fancy suit. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, with a handkerchief peeking out of the pocket, huh? Look at that, you're already thinking about the details. You should go out and get one, for real. Come on, a flunky like me can't afford a suit like that. Not when I'm helping Takashi. Seriously, man, doing that for 20 years is freaking amazing. I just figured it was the least I could do for the kid. That's not how I would describe it, especially now that you no longer have a job. Well, that's a good point. You know, isn't Takashi-kun all grown up by now? Uh, he's, uh, 25. Don't you think he should be able to stand on his own two feet at this point? Well, except now he's prepping for law school, so... Oh yeah? He wants to be a lawyer? Yep. Another blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> nah, but maybe it won't corrupt him that much. I mean, he's a good kid. You know, he writes me a letter every month and thanks me for the money. But those letters are how I know he's trying to get into law school. Maybe he was inspired to do that because of what happened to his dad. Uh, I wondered the same thing. That's why I thought I'd keep helping him until he passes the bar exam. Well, the bar exam's supposed to be pretty tough, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's been studying his ass off for the exam since college. It hasn't been easy for him. He lives on wages from his part-time job and the money I send him. Doesn't go out or party, just studies. Sure hope he passes then. Yeah, hopefully he'll manage to do it this year. Hopefully you'll be okay sending him money until then. It's gotta be rough. Well, to tell you the truth, that's a big factor. If he can't support himself soon, I don't think my heart's gonna hold up under the stress of all my stupid money troubles. No kidding. Now it all makes sense why you're broke. No, thanks. Hope you're uh, rooting for me at least. Yeah, of course I'm rooting for you. Good. Then what do you say to buying me a drink? Oh, <laughs> I walked right into that one. Come on, a clink of the glass would be music to my ears. Fine, fine. <laughs> Not like I can say no after a story like that. Hey, bartender, can I get in an order? All right, cool. And now we unlock the bond with Adachi as well. Very nice. Kasuga fills his bond with Adachi grows stronger. Adachi will now gain more experience 
when he's not in the active party. What is this about the active party? Like, I don't think as of right now that there's a scenario where Adachi or Sachan is gonna, you know, leave the active party. Let's see, Adachi can now change to the breaker job. What's the breaker job? That sounds cool. But for right now, let's keep going. Alright, cool. So now I'm glad to see, you know, I can now increase the bond with my party members now. With Adachi-san and Sachan. But also, I just found out something really cool. Welcome. So if I were to look into the bartender's inventory. Let's see. If I were to just scroll down all the way over here, or actually just going through this section here, apparently I need recipes like a potato, tomato, onions, daikon, let's see, a hot pepper, garlic, daikon, like all these materials I need to make these foods. I just figured this out. And Thanks. that, that makes me look like the game even more because I can actually grow those like right outside. Wow, man. This game, I keep learning. I keep learning and finding new ways to like this game a lot. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and continue with the story. Let's do this. All right, so welcome back. So a bit of an update what's going on right now. Wait, hold up. What's the spot over here? Oh, shoot, I came across another spot where I can buy gear. That's cool. Okay. But dang, look at these prices. Oh, these... This is where all the good stuff's at. Okay. Nice. Real nice. Gothic microphone, steel ball. Look at all this. This is nice. Real nice. Too bad I can't afford anything right now. If I will in the future. Alright, so let's see. Gotta go ahead and make my way down here. This is the spot. Ooh, hold up. What's that right there? Hmm. It's a really fancy spot. <laughs> Wait, why not? Ichiban's literally wearing a suit. Why wouldn't he fit the dress code? No Yakuza or ex Yakuza. That's really specific. Hopefully, they'll make an exception. For real? Oh, well, I really walked into that one. Dang it. Okay. Well, it wouldn't hurt to grab a bite. Since we're already here, they offer food. I'll see why not. Listen. Now, that's. That's where our question lies. So, we're in a clear? Guess not. Hey. <laughs> uh, nobody's here. You sure this is the place? Aw, are you scared? Don't be so wimpy. I thought you were a cop. That was a long time ago. I'm a driving instructor now. Ah, Dachi-san's just allergic to fancy restaurants, that's all. He's a man of basic tastes. It's true. I only ever go to fast food joints. Ugh, that's so gross. Also true. Right on time. But everyone's already inside, waiting for you. Well, we weren't late, so you don't get an apology. And I wasn't expecting one. I just thought I'd let you know. Of course, now you're making them wait further. And who is them, by the way? You'll see. Go in, please. There's no need to worry, Kasuga-san. You have the Jungihan guarantee that no harm will come to you here. Hard to trust the guy who was pointing a gun at me just a few hours ago. Ah, but now we are outside the bounds of the Great Wall of Muscle. That changes things. Here we go.
Yo, Kasuga-kun. How you doing? Xiao. And... <sighs> hey, what's up with the old guy? Watch it. That's Ryuhei Hoshino, the Seiryu clan chairman. What? But if he's here, then that would mean they're... Yeah. The Aegean Three. All the leaders gathered in the same spot. Kasuga, think you can tell us what the hell is going on here? Chapter 8, Bleach Black. Please, step inside. Hey, aren't these three supposed to be fighting a war? Supposed to be. Kind of a weird place for us to meet, Chairman Hoshino. Especially considering the three of you look more like you're ready to have a tea party than tear each other's throats out. Usually we meet only once a year. Unless there is a need to share information face to face, as we must now. We always do what it takes to keep the Great Wall intact. Your men are killing each other out there. You don't want to stop them? Stop them? Two of my youngest men were gunned down without mercy. Liamang Turf's been raided right up to the perimeter of their base. There's no stopping any of it now. At this point, whoever retreats first will have lost the war. I can't lay down my spear until that happens. That's pretty much the same deal for me. So then why are you two here? Gonna decide the war over a game of cards? <laughs> Not the worst idea. What the fuck? People are dying! And meanwhile, you three are just hanging out playing nice? Think your men would approve? Do any of you even care what your own people think? Kasuga, there's no need to throw fits about what you don't understand. Do you know right now Captain Takabe is Xiao's prisoner? <laughs> prisoner? We're treating him more like an uninvited guest. Honestly, I'd let him go if I had one good reason to. I just don't, that's all. So you're going to sit here and do nothing? Just let the chips fall where they may? That's how it needs to be. A bunch more pointless deaths is how it needs to be? They're not pointless. Our men's willingness to fight is the entire reason we're able to serve as checks on each other. As long as the triangle remains balanced, it can hold firm against outside pressure. It's much like how Japan established separation of powers after the end of its dictatorship. That's not perfect, but it's the best solution we have. Do you see the logic there? Oh boy, a post-war history lesson. What? That's what you're comparing it to, right? Yes, because it's relevant. The post-war period is when the town's lines of power were drawn. Huh? The black market was born from the ashes of the war. It laid the foundation for modern-day Jincho. Back then, the Seiryu clan was thriving. But in Chinatown, two rival Chinese gangs were competing for dominance. The winner of that fight prospers in Chinatown to this day. The gang that lost became the Yokohama Liuman. They were driven out of Chinatown and into Ijincho. The Seryu clan wasn't about to take that kind of invasion lying down. For a time, the gutters practically ran with Liumang and Seryu blood. Man, you're gonna lecture until the bell rings, Professor? You want to understand what's going on? Then you need the history, you smartass. If you want to understand the fake money, that is. The Seryu clan knows about that? Yes. All the fake money printed by the Komi Jewel goes through me. 
But doesn't that mean the Seiryu clan is the real puppet master behind all this? How do you figure that? Mabuchi started forging Chinese Yuan, sure. But only because of the counterfeit yen. I think I'm starting to figure all this out. The Liu Mang brings in the paper. The Komi Jewel prints the bills. But then, the Seiryu clan keeps all the profit? Wait, are you all in this together? Kasuga-kun, calm down, you're jumping to conclusions. Because I'm pissed off right now! First I'm kidnapped, accused of being a Seiryu Yakuza, then blamed for being the spark that ignites a war, nearly killed over Namba's thing. Now I'm here with the Ijing Three, who, by the way, don't even give a shit about the war! Tell me, why should I calm down? He's got a point. And you, with your damn Seiryu clan, you're the one getting the most out of this! No, because we're not the final destination of the fake Yen. That will be Yutaka Ogikubo's pocket. Yutaka Ogikubo? I saw his name in an article. He's some big shot in the Citizens' Liberal Party. All three of you are working together to support him politically? Why? Huh. Suddenly my history lesson seems relevant, doesn't it? Fine. Get on with it. Ogikubo is the man who proposed making fake money in Ijincho. This was 60 years ago. He pitched the idea to the first Seiryu chairman and first Liu Mang boss. A politician suggested committing federal crime to a bunch of gangsters? For real? At the time, Ogikubo was only a member of the city council. But he saw the fights breaking out between the long-established Seiryu clan and the newly arrived Liu Mang. He understood it was, in essence, a turf war. Knowing that, he looked for solutions to stop the bloodshed. Solutions that would save lives. And eventually, he managed to find an answer. Fake money, of all things. Industry. Which in this case is, yes, fake money. Okikubo split the roles up evenly. That way, both organizations would have a common goal. The Liu Mang would import special paper, the Seryu clan would print and transport the money. How did Ogi Kubo know the counterfeiting process? Well, he didn't at first. But since he had faith in his plan, and a desire for peace, he used every single connection he had to collect the raw materials, plus the recipe. Counterfeiting wasn't that difficult back then. Currency didn't have all the security features it has now. It's only gotten harder over the years. But anyway, after the first batch was printed, Ogikubo used it to bribe the cops. The cops? Not the Seiryu clan or the Liu Mang? There would have been no point in paying off those two. That conflict goes deeper. Ogikubo understood that. Okay, but why give it to the police? They wanted to control them, of course. And in the blink of an eye, they became his loyal servants. That ought to surprise no one given how corruptible law enforcement tends to be. Anyway, Ogikubo had his new minions in uniform crack down on one certain region of Ijincho. Well, that doesn't sound like such a bad thing. Yeah, he was making the city safer, right? Now, that was just a side effect of what he really wanted. To squash every attempt by the Seiryu to drive out the Liuman. All police resources were dedicated to that one goal. It created a tiny pocket of Ijincho that was essentially violence-free. Well, I bet that worked out great for the Leo Mang. Oh, and you're the sharp one, I take it. Yes. That zone became the Liu Mang's home. So there it was. A place controlled by a criminal organization, but with low crime. The first gray zone. And the Seiryu clan just accepted that. Hmm? Why would they give up their territory and all its income streams like that? Because they were getting continuous payouts from the counterfeiting operation. And that wasn't the only thing. Anytime one of us did something that normally would have landed us in hot water, Ogikubo would contain it. He kept it off police reports. That kept us from losing men to the law. So there were plenty of benefits for us. All while we kept our honor. This Ogikubo's a pretty shrewd guy. Nah. 
He just used some old tricks every politician knows. Oh. Well, perhaps. But do you understand now how we benefit from him? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And my people reap those benefits also. In the 80s, the Komi Jewel was saved by the Ijincho Grey Zone. How? Our parent organization was the Jingon Mafia, which formed decades ago in Korea. Even only a few years ago, he was a body double for their leader. But every time the Jingon Mafia got crushed, some of its people would drift to Ijincho. My mother was one of those. I was young when she brought me here. Ijincho was a breath of fresh air after living so long under their ridiculous code. More and more people heard about the relief we found here. So more came. But then our safety was threatened by something else. As our numbers grew, so did our clashes with the Yokohama Liomong. You started fighting them? Not outright. Ogikubo stepped in. Right before a real war erupted. He brought us a proposal. That we take over the Seiryu's counterfeiting business. It was an offer of steady income and safe territory. How could we refuse? In return, we would perform the surveillance necessary to contain the secret. That's how we started to build a system that now monitors every inch of Ijincho. It became our way to contribute to the smooth running of Ijincho, alongside the Seiryu and Liomang. So that's the origin story behind the Ijin 3. Ever since, we've all supported Ogikubo. And he supported us in kind. He used the huge streams of money from us to secure his seat at the helm of the Citizens' Liberal Party. Now, no one in the cabinet can speak against him. After masterminding a way to bring peace to the city, he moved up in the world. Well, there are worse ways to climb the ladder, but I can't condone it. It's still a cover-up. <laughs> really? So you would say even perfect results don't matter if the methods are flawed? What about the police themselves? What about their alliance with all the Yakuza which grew from the scorched earth of post-war Japan? Light and dark joined hands to rebuild, and that's how we got where we are today. You can't deny the ends justify the means. Ah, well... What does it even matter what happened? Who cares about that stuff right now? It's all in Eugene Show's past! What we gotta think about is its future. So why'd you call us here? What do you want? <laughs> Your friend Nambakun, during his search for his brother, spied on us and invaded our privacy. I assume he began with the fake bills because that was his brother's subject of investigation. But he was reckless, digging through Komi Jewel affairs like a rabbit raccoon. Right from the start, he's refused to show any respect to the Eugene Three. Now he's seen the counterfeiting for himself, and we have no idea where he is. We must ensure his permanent silence. Why are you telling us this? You looking to make a deal for his life or something? A deal? Kasuga, under most circumstances, all your lives would be forfeit. <laughs> but... I have some idea of how this fake bill ended up in your pocket. What? Huh? You do? Out of respect for this person, I will look the other way. But who the hell was it? If you really want to know, you'll have to bring Namba to me. Personally. We can't do that to Nanchan. Sure is tempting. Kasuga, but I'll pass. Nothing I need to know so bad that I'd sell out a friend. So we done here? You do realize, if word gets out about the counterfeiting, the Great Wall will crumble. And that means the end of the Grey Zone. Yeah, that would suck. For you. Look, the Great Wall keeps the peace with less than honorable means, sure. But it provides a safe haven for desperate souls with nowhere left to turn. Yeah, man, I get all that. 
Well, here's what you don't get, you moron. When we say no one gets in, that includes the Tojo clan and the Omi Alliance. So see, if we're talking about people who owe their lives to the Grey Zone, you're one of them, Kasuga-kun. Uh, what? After you were shot, the only reason the Omi didn't finish you off is because you were inside the zone. What are you trying to say? That I owe something to the city? Go ahead and act like you're above it all. But you've benefited from our operation as much as any of us. Fine. Still doesn't mean I'm gonna sell out a friend. Before you insist on that, I have something important to say. Yeah, what? We already have assassins hunting Namba. What the hell? Whose assassins? Mine. Somebody had to step up. That's stepping up in your book? Hunting an innocent man? Unlike you, Kasuga, I don't turn down attractive offers. But don't worry. I told my guys to make it painless. But, uh, my men have gotten a little rough lately. You son of a bitch. Call him off! No can do. I think one death for the sake of the whole city is worth the price. What do you say to our offer now? If you refuse, Namba will die. But aren't you gonna kill him all the same if we bring him to you? Instead of worrying about that, worry about getting to him first. Your clock's ticking. Hey, we don't even know where to look. I may have an idea. Well, there you go. So, Kasuga, given all this, what will you do? I mean, guess I'm rescuing Namba from your stupid assassins. Wow, we're put into quite a predicament here. Let's go ahead and talk to you. Yes? No. Well, it's better than nothing. Yo. Hmm, okay, that's a start. Hmm? Why not? Ooh, that is true. That is true. Yes. Huh. I see. Oh, really? Hey, yeah. Well, if we're put in this predicament, we gotta get to him. But what are we gonna do afterwards? Yo. Sup? Second floor, okay. All right, cool, so let me see how far we gotta travel now. Gotta go from here all the way to, dang, on the other side. All right, gotta go all the way to the other side of the map. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and meet y'all over at the destination, but dang, we met the engine three. That's, that's pretty crazy though. They're all just sitting in the office too. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and meet y'all location. I'm about to get into a fight. See y'all soon.